You're listening to Hashtag No Filter with Zach Peter. That's me, your naturally platinum blonde pop culture connoisseur. I'm the reality TV junkie, self-improvement addict, and host with only the hottest tea spilled fresh weekly. For more hot takes, go and give me a follow at Just Plain Zach. I always keep it funny and I always keep it cute. And if you're like me and you want to stay up to date with the latest reality tea, you can always go and give us a follow at No Filter with Zach on the Instagram. Or you can join our private Facebook group. The link is in the description below. I hope right now you are sipping on some fizzy Housewives-inspired wine for yourself. Pack and punch at 13% alcohol by volume, but less than a gram of sugar. It is my no-filter wine. It is yummy. It is delicious. We have a light, crisp rosé. It is fizzy, yes. We have a light, crisp white wine that is also fizzy, yes. And they are available in four fun designs inspired by Real Housewives of Atlanta, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, Real Housewives of New Jersey, and Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. Salt Lake City says, I'm not going out tonight. I'm disengaging. And because I've been loving Real Housewives of Atlanta's return, I'm sipping on some sweetie. I'm gone with a wine. Fabulous rosé. 13% alcohol, but less than a gram of sugar. If you are ordering, make sure you are 21 and over and drink responsibly. Always, you can order it now at nofilterwine.com. That is nofilterwine.com. Oh my gosh, we have so much to break down today, you guys. We have Stassi and Bo. They are getting married again. We have the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills premiere that is coming up. And I have some tea on what we can expect to see. We have some tensions brewing between Dolores and her new man in New Jersey. Teresa is speaking out about her beef with her brother. So is Melissa. And then we have some more low-budget rumors on the internet that I cannot wait to debunk. Okay, let's get started. Let's get to it. I know that we can do it. Where? Where are we going to the tea spilling mountain? Where are we going to the tea spilling mountain? Also, if you guys are watching on YouTube and you like my shirt, it says tea spilling professional. It is available at justplainsack.com slash shop. So you can get your own tea spilling, uh, tea spilling professional merch at justplainsack.com slash shop. Okay, Stassi and Bo are headed to Europe for their wedding. They were originally set to wed in Rome back in 2020, and it was originally supposed to be filmed for Vanderpump Rules. And as Stassi revealed in her new book, Off With My Head, it was going to be a crossover to help bridge the the rebooted Vanderpump Rules with a new spinoff called Valley Rules. Uh, Stassi talks about it all in her book, Off With My Head, which is on sale now. And that was originally supposed to be part of Valley Rules and Vanderpump Rules. And it was all going to be filmed. And they picked a very specific location because that's the location that they had to go with because they needed all of those approvals, whatever, whatever. Well, then the world shut down and Stassi got fired from Vanderpump Rules. So instead, they had an intimate backyard ceremony while she was pregnant with their daughter, Hartford. And they have some really like cute photos. And she's like, oh, I'm pregnant. I'm in my backyard. And then Kristen was like, yes, I was invited to the wedding. And everybody was like, oh, my God, amazing. Yes, we love it. We love love. Hashtag love wins. And while Stassi was on her book tour promoting Off With My Head, she confirmed that she confirmed confirmed last month that she was watching Keeping Up with Kardashians. I believe it was Kim's wedding to Kanye. That was in, what was that? Uh, in Italy, was it? In Belvedere? I don't remember where that was exactly, but it was a European wedding. And and Stasi said that it was watching Keeping Up with Kardashians that inspired her to be like, you know what, Bo? No, we are going to do a European wedding. It's going to be small. It's going to be intimate, but we are going to do this. And then on April 22nd, Bo posted on his Instagram story that he was so excited to be marrying his wife again in three weeks. So today, Stassi, Bo, Katie, and their pal, Christina Kelly, who we've seen pop in and out of Vanderpump Rules over the years, were all spotted flying out. And it looks like the wedding is going to be happening this weekend, possibly this Friday, which happens to be May 13th. We know Stassi loves horror movies, and I don't imagine most people would want their anniversary on Friday the 13th, so I would imagine imagine the date may be open and it might be something that Stasi might actually be interested in. It is interesting though because when was their original wedding? Was that it wasn't in May. I feel like their original wedding was in June of 2020. So I mean I feel like you should just get married on the same day you originally got married, but again, it depends on availability and location and all of that sort of stuff. But there is I mean, if he posted on April 22nd that in three weeks he was going to be marrying her, then the exact date three weeks from April 22nd is Friday, May 13th. And being that Stassi does love horror movies, like it does kind of make a little sense. I don't know if I would want my anniversary or my wedding to be on Friday the 13th, but then Friday the 13th isn't the same every year. I don't know. Maybe it's jinxed. Maybe it's not. But... 
I'm curious. I'm curious. I'm curious. I'm curious. I'm curious what you guys think. Sheena just announced that Tom Sandoval and Raquel will be her guests at her live taping of Shenanigans at City Winery NYC this Thursday. So it's unlikely that they'll be at the wedding because if the wedding really is on Friday, then that would be really tight to try and do the show Thursday night and then Friday morning immediately fly out to Europe. I just don't think that that's possible unless the wedding is on like Saturday or Sunday, the 14th or the 15th. But... I'm not sure. I actually kind of like this theory of Friday the 13th. And I, either way, I don't think they would all be flying to New York and then immediately be flying. Oops, there's, oh, 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 phone's ringing. People calling. It's Monday. Of course, just like clockwork, as soon as I decide I'm going to start taping the show, phone starts blowing up. Um, I will get back to that. But anyway, apparently it's a really intimate ceremony and there's a really tight guest list and I assume it's really just going to be close family and really close friends. Not sure if Kristen is going to be there though. She hasn't posted anything about like flying out anywhere or going to Europe or making any plans like Katie has and Katie's like I've had layovers and I've been like oh I'm stuck at the airport and I'm curious if Katie's actually going to be in the wedding and maybe that's why she's flying out so early because what's today Monday and they're all flying. Like, I understand Stassi and Bo, they want to fly out early. They want to make sure Hartford kind of gets acclimated. They want to make sure they look at the venue and they talk to all the caterers and there's a wedding planner and like all, like there are a bunch of logistics and, and stuff that they want to make sure they get a bunch of stuff done out of the way. Have a minute to kind of breathe, make sure everything is cool. Christina Kelly, I'm sure is there to kind of help. But I'm curious if Katie's going there so early because she might be maybe a, a not a bridesmaid, but the maid of honor, maybe. I mean, obviously, I would assume like maybe mom would be matron of honor, but like it would make sense if Katie were the maid of honor. Stassi was, was Stassi in Katie's wedding? Wasn't she a bride? No, I don't think she was a bridesmaid, but she was definitely in the wedding because I know that was the season that she came back to Vanderpump Rules and she missed the engagement, but she wanted to be part of the wedding. And so she was like part of the wedding. And then she like fake officiated their like Vegas wedding, didn't she? I don't know. The, the details are a little fuzzy, but. I am curious if Katie is going to be in the way. I would I would assume Katie's at least going to be a bridesmaid. But you would normally bring your maid of honor this early out so that the maid of honor is with you to handle and put out any fires. Or unless they're doing like a bachelorette sort of situation. But I, Stassi hates bachelor parties. So I don't think that that would actually be the, the case. But so we know Sheena... And Tom Sandoval, definitely Raquel. I don't think Stassi is close to Raquel, but T Sandoval and Sheena will likely not be at the wedding. But I'm curious who you guys think will be making the cut. Jackson, Brittany, maybe Kristen. Comment below if you're watching this on YouTube with who you think is going to be making the final cut for the guest list. I heard, I don't know if I made this up or I read this in like a low budget comment um, on Instagram that the guest list is only going to be about, be about 35 people. I may have, she may have mentioned that in one of her interviews recently too when promoting the book. But anyway, curious to who you think from the Vanderpump crew will be there. Jax, Brittany, we know Tom and Ariana are off the table. Um, Lala, do we think Lala and Ocean will be there? Uh, isn't Lala currently on her, uh, uh, her Give Them Lala tour? So there's a good chance Lala might not even be there. That would be crazy. But wouldn't it be funny if Jax and Brittany were there? Like, I think that would be kind of funny because, like, it's Jax and Brittany and, like, Jax is Stassi's ex. And there's, like, so much tumultuous history between the two of them that it would just be kind of funny to have them at the wedding. I don't think Schwartz is going to be there. I think that would be a little awkward for Katie, especially with such a tight guest list. I would predict Kristen's going to be there. And I actually wouldn't be surprised if Jax and Brittany are there. I would hope Lala would make it. Let's actually check the Give Them Lala website and see if she has any tour dates, give them live.com. And it looks like the 9th, the 10th, the oh, the 11th, the 12th, and the 13th. So it looks like Lala's not going to be at the wedding because uh, Wednesday she's going to be in Houston. Uh, Thursday, she's going to be in Austin. And then Friday, she's going to be in Dallas. So Lala's probably not going to be there either. So that makes me wonder if Jackson Brittany will be there and if Kristen's going to be there. We know Kristen was at, Kristen and Katie were just at Lala's show here in Irvine. So we shall see. Let me know who you think is going to make the cut. We now know Lala, Sheena, Tom Sandoval, they're all out, which also means I'm sure Ariana will be out. I'm sure Ariana is not going to go all the way to Europe just for Stassi and Bo's wedding. I don't think she likes them that much. I'm sure they're cordial or whatever but I don't think there's like a genuine like yeah let me travel across the world just for your wedding 
And also, don't forget, guys, we are breaking down Stassi's book, Off With My Head, every Tuesday evening live on Instagram at No Filter With Zach and here on YouTube at youtube.com slash Just Plain Zach. So be sure to subscribe or follow to join our book club live every Tuesday. We broke down the first third of the book last week. This week, we'll be breaking down the second part of the book and then the third part of the book next week. So there you go. And then we'll be starting House of Hilton, which dives into all the Kathy family drama, which will be fun to break down throughout the season of Real Houses of Beverly Hills airing. So there you go. Speaking of Real Houses of Beverly Hills, in a new teaser for this week's premiere, of Real Houses of Beverly Hills, we see Erica and Garcelle discussing the Girardi embezzlement scandal. And in the conversation, it looks like, because there were some paparazzi photos at the time and they were working out, so it looks like they're at the gym. Erica reiterates that the money never touched her account and that the reports saying that she received $20 million are false and that even the trustee has agreed that the money never went into EJ Global LLC's bank accounts. Now, we know that this is technically true because Tom wasn't paying Erica directly. He was paying for her life and then in his tax records stating that these expenses were loans made to Erica's company. It was a uh, um, it was basically a cooking of the books and Erica isn't lying when she said that she never received the cash or she never received a direct deposit of the money. Garcelle looks skeptical, which is to be fair because you know, there's there you're reading all the reports, but also like, you know, if I can do my own research and I'm just like a podcaster, but I can figure these things out, I can access the court documents, I can actually see what's going on in this case, then to me it's kind of like, well, why can't Sutton and Garcel? Because like here's the thing, Sutton and Garcel can hire like somebody that can actually investigate this. I'm not hiring anybody. I'm personally going through all these court documents myself. I'm sitting in these, you know, Zoom cases myself. I'm sifting through all the BS tweets from Ronald Richards myself and like trying to make common sense logic out of all of it. And it's not as hard as I think people would think that it is. Like if you actually empower yourself to like read, like things actually make sense. I know the hair is blonde, but it, you know, the bleach hasn't killed all of my brain cells. And I consider myself to be a fairly rational, objective and intelligent person. Um, but I feel like they like to read news headlines and we forget that news headlines are written with the sake of sensen- uh, sensationalizing things to grab our attention. And so in her confessional, Garcelle says, well, none of the headlines in the news are saying what Erica is saying. And I'm like, well, no, because the headlines, if they said Erica didn't know where the, or that the money never went into Erica's account, then the story is dead and there's it's not compelling anymore. It's not as exciting. It's not as interesting. They need Erica to still kind of be the headline so that they can keep pushing the story and that they can keep making money off of it. If anything, the biggest question now is, did Erica know what Tom was doing? Was she aware of it? That's the bigger piece, and that's what's in the new Edelson PC lawsuit. That's what he's going to have to prove. Or they may not even have to prove it. It really all just depends on the judge and how the judge sees culpability. I've always been very clear. This is where we move away from objective fact and into my opinion. I've always been very clear that I think accountability needs to be put on the lawyers that helped Tom execute this alleged scheme, the ones that were actually receiving direct deposits from the Girardi Keys bank accounts. And and now we know the trust accounts. Um, the ones that were directly profiting, the ones that received direct money from these cases because they had commissions, right? They worked at Girardi Keys. They helped execute this alleged scheme along with the office employees, right? The bookkeeper, whoever was helping Tom put the fa- the tax filings together, whether that was the bookkeeper or whether that was a separate CPA, that's still to be determined because Chris Camone, the bookkeeper, isn't talking. He's like, nope, I'm pleading the fifth. We also have like the assistants that used to write Tom's emails for him. We have the front desk woman. Like, People were filing these things. People, I'm sure, were having access to some of these documents. We know that Tom wasn't the only one with access to these accounts. Other lawyers had access to some of these trust accounts because they were also working on these cases. And if they didn't have access to those trust accounts and clients were saying that they weren't getting paid, then that's their fiduciary responsibility to report that. None of them ever reported that. They just kept benefiting from it. They had a lot more culpability in a lot of this. Even the judges that kept letting Tom get by, those to me are the big players and the ones with more power to continue harming innocent victims in the future. 
hold those people accountable because they're the ones that have a law license. They're the ones that are sitting at the judge desk. They're the ones that have a fiduciary responsibility to clients. Those are the ones that need to be held more accountable. And everyone likes to say, oh, well, Erica makes the most money. Is she though? Because all her money right now is going towards paying legal fees and not going towards paying any of the victims because none of those cases have actually been proven to put her on the line for any of it. Um, so yeah, Royal Housewives of Beverly Hills returns this Wednesday night on Bravo TV. We also see that Rinna and Sutton, their beef will be at the front and center when the episode up opens up on Wednesday. And we also know that the scene Eric and Garcelle filmed together was right before news of Dorit's robbery or her home invasion happened. Because I remember in the paparazzi photos earlier that morning, we saw Eric and Garcelle at the gym with Erica wearing that blue jacket or that blue um, like windbreaker, I think is what it was. And then later that day, like a couple hours after we see Eric and the paparazzi photos arriving at Dorit's house in that same uh, wind, uh, windbreaker, I think is what it, what it is. But the episode will focus heavily on the home invasion. And Dorit apparently was filming again the very next day, which is what we're going to see in this premiere. She obviously didn't film the day of, you know, the invasion and PK was on his way home. But apparently the next day cameras were up and rolling, which I can only, oops, which I can only imagine was... A little traumatizing for her. And from what I hear, she is very traumatized and has a really rough time this season. And this is also where we see, um, remember when Teddy Mellencamp on Two Teas in a Pod was alluding that there was one of the women wasn't the most supportive of Dorit at this time? Cough, cough, Sutton Strack. Apparently, that's also what we're going to see in this premiere because there's apparently a scene between Kyle and Sutton where Sutton's like, oh, I'm having a rough life or life is hard right now. And Kyle's like, um, I don't think your home was just you know, broken into with your children next door. And sounds like, well, that doesn't mean my life isn't hard to Kyle. And it's just like, ooh, we're going to see Sutton. We see the little glimpses of the real Sutton. Here's the thing. I, I adore Sutton because she has these quirky, fun moments. And I think she can deliver good moments. And she's also learning how to deliver some good confessionals. Um, Got to give credit where credit is due. But there are little glimpses and little cracks of Sutton from the South that like to come out. They came out with Crystal in that conversation where she was like, I don't see color. And then where Crystal's like, really? You're that girl that doesn't see color? So there are these little cracks and these little moments that people love to just brush off and be like, oh, Sutton's, uh, Sutton's amazing. Listen, I'm not saying Sutton's the devil, but I'm not saying she's an angel either. I love Sutton for what she brings to the show, but I'm just saying we can't have these double standards. Can't do it. No, 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 no. No way, Jose. But anyway, tune in, guys, this Wednesday, this Wednesday night on Bravo TV, The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. So ter- tensions seem to be brewing between Dolores' new man, Paul, and her ex-hubby, Frank Catania. So Dolores claims that the two are doing just fine and that they haven't had many interactions, but that they have interacted and uh, there's no beef. Frank, on the other hand, says that they don't really see each other at all. If anything, he seems he feels like Dolores seems to be keeping Paul away from him. And Frank thinks that Paul might have an issue with him. And so I'm curious if like this distance is because Paul possibly is intimidated by Frank and Tanya. Could he be threatened by Dolores's relationship with him? I feel like it's weird to come into a relationship where you're so close with your ex and you're living with your ex. I understand there's like a co-parenting situation, but Dolores and Frank have like a real deep love there um and people would still love to see them back together i don't think it ever would happen i think dolores has made that very clear but it's still you know i think could be very threatening to a new relationship to see your partner like in a solid relationship with somebody else that they used to date or used to be married to and used to like bang and like all of that sort of stuff. So maybe we'll get to see a bit more of it in the Real House of New Jersey reunion part two, which will be airing this week as well. But we shall see. Speaking of the reunion, though, last week we saw Teresa and Joe Gorga really going at it and Melissa kind of getting dragged in the middle of it as well. But Teresa since apologized to her brother on social media saying that she lost herself in the heat of the moment, which to me, feels like a pretty big breakthrough. Like, Teresa, we know, does not take accountability. Teresa, we know, is just, you know, all about Teresa. But it looks like Teresa's actually, you know, changing things up. I mean, the fact that she's issuing a public apology and saying that she lost herself in the moment, I think that's big of her. Melissa, on the other hand, was on her podcast, On Display, On Display, with Melissa Gorga. 
And so she says that they're fine, they're cordial, but this like deep relationship that they want to have is never going to happen. Like it's just, it's going to be light, it's going to be cordial, and it's going to be, it is what it is. So that is that. (sighs) Okay, I want to talk about some OC rumors because there are some low budget rumors that are surfacing on Twitter and they just make me LOL, LMAO. I just laugh so hard um, at the low budget bullshit that people love to put out on the internet. So Rumors began surfacing that Gina was demoted from Real Housewives of Orange County and on top of that, that Lydia would be returning to the show and not Tamara. Well, um, I believe his name is Harshan Kapoor on Twitter. He's the one that tweeted out the news about Lydia and Tamara, which ultimately ended up being false and which he ultimately ended up admitting that he lied about. And for me, I'm just at the point where like I'm laughing because it's like I'm so sick of the low budget tea. And I've tried to call out some of these motherfuckers for like posting these like lies on the Internet that they know people are going to pick up on and they know is going to get them trending and they know people are going to retweet them and like them and then send them to people like me and be like, oh, my God, did you hear these rumors? And then you're going to have all these Instagram accounts that are reposting it without verifying any of it because then they get attention from it. And it's just like. I've tried to call them out and then they have like this posse of like twats on Twitter that like will come after you and it's just like oh my god it's not even worth like responding to any of them but then it's like I don't even want to give them the attention but it's just funny and I like that they finally that you know this guy finally came out and he's like I literally made this up and I lied and I did not expect it to blow up but it's like didn't you though like why else would you post a a fake rumor on the internet if you didn't want people to like get hyped up about it. That's what people do here all the time. People on Twitter make shit up left and right and it's so annoying for some of us that actually have real tea to spill and do this for an actual living. Oh, but people love to go on Twitter or they love to go on their blind items and they love to make shit up just for the fun of it and they like to light the fire and they pour the gasoline and then they laugh it off and they're just like, oops, oops. And I'm like, no, this is not an oopsie whoopsie daisy. No, 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 no. Like, just stop being annoying and posting fake shit. How about that? That that seems like an easy solution to all of this. Let people that actually do this for a living do what they do and do it best. You can retweet me because I'm, I'm not going to tweet out bullshit unless I verified it. Or I'm very clear when I have an opinion about something or when I ask people for opinions. Like, I'm very clear with a lot of that stuff. So there's that. Okay. Thank you very much. That's me, Zach Peter. And that is my rant for mon- this Monday. Just another manic Monday. Is that it? Or magic Monday? What is, like, what's the deal? Um, okay, well, since we've broken down most of the tea, let's talk about me. I'm the tea. I wonder if Kristen Doty she posted anything else is she at the airport no the last thing she posted was yesterday about going to the movies with her boyfriend alex and i'm just like er am jur can we just like let me know who's on the guest list Kristen. can i get on the guest list i'll fly to europe for stassi's wedding i got this i'll do it i love it let's go um should i give you guys a little update on how the dates went last week remember i had two dates last week and um, let's see. So the first date was on when, yeah, it was Wednesday and Friday because the live was on Thursday. First date was on Wednesday. And this is with the guy that I met at speed dating because I wanted to like take a little bit of a break. And I wanted to, it was right in between Nashville and New York. And I was like stressed and overwhelmed. And I had a lot on my mind and I had a lot on my heart. And I was like, I need a distraction. I think I've opened up a, a bit about this with you guys that like, I was also in this weird place of like not feeling attractive. I know that sounds weird. And I, or maybe attractive isn't the right word. Cause every time I say that to somebody, they're always just like, what do you mean? Dun, dun, dun. I don't understand. Why would you say that about yourself? And it, it, I think maybe attra- attractive, like not physically attractive. Like that, I'm not saying that I, I don't feel like I look good. Cause like my body's the best that it's been. And my face is the best that it's been that like I, for me, it's like I don't feel appealing to people. I don't feel like people are like interested in me other than maybe just like, you know, the pretty Instagram 
messaging that you get or whatever, the packaging that you re- that the package comes in, but they're not interested in what's inside the package. They just like the marketing on the outside. Um, but anyway, so I was in that weird place. I was like, and I got invited to come to this speed dating event here in LA. And so I was like, all right, fuck it. Let's do it. Let's go. Let's see if anything, like I'll just get to go out. I'll have a drink. I'll talk to some cute boys and you know, whatever. And I actually really enjoyed it. And I had a really good time because it m- reminded me that I am a human being that does have a sexuality and that does like to be flirted with and that does like when guys, you know, shoot their shot with me. And so that was fun. And I had a good night. And there was really only one guy of all of them there that I was like, "Mm, there's only one that I could really see myself maybe going on another date with. So actually, he was the one that was on Friday. The Wednesday guy was a different guy that's from, he used to be out of town. He used to come to LA and then he just like officially moved to LA. And so he took me out. Oh, I think I told you guys. And then I had like three drinks with my mom at lunch. And then I had three drinks with him. And then he came back to my apartment and we cuddled and I knocked out and nothing happened. There was no boom, no boom, boom in the bedroom. But I also was not trying to do boom, boom in the bedroom. I literally was like, the most you're going to get out of me is a cuddle and a kiss. And that's what he got. And, you know, we'll see if anything comes of that again. I wouldn't mind seeing him again and maybe not doing three drinks or six drinks in a day and like actually toning that down and like maybe getting to know each other a little bit better. Um, And then the other guy, the speed dating guy, he was the one that I went out with on Friday. And he was really nice. He came all the way to downtown. He like, you know, looked cute. He put on his nice shoes. Um, He didn't, he asked if there were any recommendations of places that I knew here in downtown. And I did. And I made a reservation um, just to like be on the safe safe side because it was Friday night. And with certain spots, it's always hit or miss. Um, But there's always one spot that's like my usual go-to spot that I enjoy going to because I can usually always get a table there. And the menu's great. The food's great. The ambiance is nice. Like, it's just, it's a good vibe. So we go there and then he's like, "Mm, I'm not really feeling this menu, but I heard there's another restaurant around here that we can go to that's only a few blocks away. And so I was like, okay, like, why didn't you just fucking say that from the beginning? Um, like, and, or if you're going to tell me to pick a place, then you can't be like, "Mm, I don't like this menu. Like if somebody invites me to go somewhere to dinner, then I'm not going to be like, Oh, I don't like this menu. I'm not going to eat anything. Like I'll find something on the menu to eat. Anyway, we go to this other restaurant, had a decent enough conversation. Um, it wasn't a terrible date, but there wasn't like, I'll be honest. There was a lot going on. There was some stuff that happened on Thursday that trickled over into Friday and halfway through the date, I got a text message that like really threw me off. And I was just not, I know I wasn't fully present and connected on the day and that's my bad. Um, but like I said, there was just some shit that happened on Thursday and it like just kept like uh, snowballing over the weekend. And I was just in my head and like not present at all. And so I wasn't fully myself and I didn't lead with my best foot and I wasn't really engaging in the conversation as strongly because I was too in my head and I was trying to not be. But the other thing too that was way off was he kept talking about like his exes and he's 45. Okay, I'm 28. I'll be 29 in a few weeks. He just turned 45 and he has been open with me that he likes younger dudes. And I've been open with him that I typically date older, not usually 45. Like, I mean, you know, guys that are like, early to mid thirties. Sometimes I'll go on a date in, you know, late thirties, but we had connected at the speed dating. And I was like, you know what? I don't think this is going to go anywhere long term, but it'll be fun to like go on another date and see, you know, how this transpires. So anyway, that happens. And then he tells me that like his most recent ex, he was like really disappointed in him because he was like expecting him to do something nice and special for Valentine's day. And he just didn't. And he just like, doesn't know how to like be emotionally like a romantic or all of these things. And I was like, Oh, well like how old was he? And he was like, well, he was 19. And I'm like, well, that's fucking why you're 45 fucking years old and you're dating a 19 year old. Like, what do you think your emotional needs, your emotional level of maturity, like where you're at is a completely different place than where someone at 19 is going to be, even if they are mature. And he's like, well, he has a good job and he makes good money. I was like, yeah, like, listen, emotional maturity is something that comes with time. Like, yes, some people can be old souls, but like you need to have your your heart beaten up a bit and you need to have your soul ripped apart a few times and you need to have some stitches, you know, and battle wounds that build you into the person and, you know, make you a crazy, psychotic, neurotic bitch with like, you know, trust issues and, and walls that are sky high that you want somebody to come and break down. But like, 
I was like, come on. Like, that's no, that was like, a, that was one of the biggest red flags. Cause I'm just like, what is it that somebody at 19 years old, other than looking cute and pretty is going to be able to provide for you? And especially if they're not meeting your emotional needs and they're not able to, uh, to show up for you in a way romantically, like what makes you think? And so now I'm thinking maybe it wasn't even so much that I wasn't fully present or connected, but maybe I was a little too anchored in myself. Maybe I was a little too confident and too, um, like, listen, at 28, going on 29, soon to be 30 next year, I am who I am. And I am only growing more sure of myself and more confident of the person that I am and not willing to compromise or settle for things, you know. So I know that what I bring to the table is very different than what somebody at 19 years old is going to bring to the table. And that's not to say that there aren't very mature 19 year olds. And that's not to say that somebody in their late 20s is not is is not going to be immature. I just know what I bring to the table and, you know, not that I like to compare myself, but I'm like, if you're looking for somebody that's 19, you're just looking for somebody that's pretty. I can be pretty on the outside, but like, I don't think I'm going to be able to, you know, meet all of the boxes that you're looking to check here. And I don't think I'm interested in meeting the boxes that you're looking to check here. So at this point, thank you. Next. Like, I don't know. Like, listen, I'm pretty sure when people are on dates with me, they find a million red flags. Um, that was one of the biggest ones. And all he did was talk about, I would say a good 40% of the entire conversation centered around his exes. Not just that one, but like other exes, his best friend that it was an ex. And so, you know, we also talked about family and family, his family. And that's great. I love like family is a priority for me. So I love a guy that prioritizes family. But, you know, we also didn't talk about like his work or his career. That's a really important thing for me. So anyway, at the end of the night, we walk back and we're walking back to my apartment and I'm like, oh, maybe we'll like, you know, make out a little, maybe watch a movie, you know, kind of cuddle. I'm, I'm not against that. I don't see this going anywhere long term, but I'm willing to enjoy it in the moment. Definitely not going to bang him. But, you know, let's see where this goes. And so he comes back up and he's like, can I use the restroom? And I'm like, of course. And so he goes and he uses the restroom and then he comes out and he's like, so I'm going to bounce. And I was like, oh, you're leaving already? And I didn't mind. On the back of my mind, I was like, oh, I actually don't mind that because it kind of takes the pressure off and I can kind of just like chill. But then he's like, yeah, I just don't feel like there's a total connection here. And part of me was like, ouch, ego hurt. You're breaking up with me. But then I was like, you know what? I appreciate I am grateful for his candor and I'm grateful that he was open and honest with me. Um and listen, my ass does not look like a 19-year-old ass. You know, my body has been through some shit. And even though it looks great, it is not a 19-year-old body. So if that's what you're looking for, you're not going to find that. And you're probably not going to want to bang me. Um, but my body's damn good. I will tell you that. It's just not, you know, there's some stretch marks. There's a little cellulite. It's been through some shit. So, you know, it is, it is what it is but it didn't work out. And I was kind of like, at first I was like, really, you're going to tell me you don't want to see me again because you didn't feel a connection. But then I was like, no, I'm actually grateful for that feedback because I didn't feel a connection either. And it's best that we just kind of nip it in the bud. I wouldn't have mind a little kiss or a little makeout session, but nope, that didn't happen. And here I am, a tea spilling professional, still solo. I'm riding solo. I'm riding solo. I'm riding solo, solo, solo. Um, but yeah, that's all I got for you guys today. That's me. This is me, Zach Peter. You can give me a follow at Just Plain Zach. Or you can follow the show for all the latest reality tea at No Filter with Zach. If you're watching this on YouTube, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, or smash that like button and hit that bell notification button. That way you always get the tea in your inbox as soon as it spills. Thank you guys for tuning in to hashtag No Filter with Zach Peter. I love you. I appreciate you. I hope this weekend you drink some No Filter wine. You can get it at nofilterwine.com. Must be 21 or older to order. Please drink responsibly. It is a 13% alcohol, but less than a gram of sugar wine collection. It is fizzy. We, come, we have two flavors, a rosé and a white, and they are both delicious. Currently, I'm crushing on the white because it's the new one, and I just love things that are new. But we have four fun designs, and they're all available at nofilterwine.com. I love you guys. I hope you have a wonderful week ahead this Wednesday. I'm going to be releasing our interview our, uh, or the segment from our Spilling Tea Live Nashville tour with Emily D. Baker. That's going to be coming out this Wednesday. So get ready for that. And then we'll be going live on Thursday like we always do. Thursday Night Lives on YouTube now and on Instagram at No Filter with Zach. We go live every Tuesday nights and every Thursday nights at 5.30 p.m. Pacific. So set your eye, Cal, and know that that's when we're going to be going live. So I will talk to you and we can do a little Q&A then. All right, guys. I love you. I appreciate you. Have a wonderful Monday and I will talk to you very soon. Bye. <laughs>